Bang, bang. Pow, pow. What's up, everybody? Jay Hayes here, since I'm doing a review on a device that I picked up. Not only for the purposes of the review, but to carry it in store because I know how successful this is gonna be. You know, it's one of those devices where you already know by looking at it the way that it's going to function that it's gonna be successful and it's gonna be good. And of course, I'm gonna go into this open-winded, meaning like, listen, if, if, if it's bad, it's bad, I'm gonna tell you. But that's gonna be very difficult for me to do considering the configurations and what you could do with this. Statquam, oh man, me and this company go way back. Back when I was a little old, I guess kind of thuggish wannabe reviewer, that was just a bad time in my life and I've let that go and I haven't taken those videos down because I want people to know where I came from, not so much where I'm at right now. So I had started Vape Life when I was on the balcony, I was all jacked up, it's, it was just really, really bad. And I started carrying clones. Now, this is where the clone thing comes in. If you look at some of my older videos, you'll see where I talk about clones. That's obviously, I didn't have the knowledge of what I have today. Plus, you have to realize that back then, if you want an RTA, you're gonna spend even $70 on a clone. Okay, I'm not joking. 60, 70 bucks on a clone. A great example would be H Cigar. They had made their little K-Fun rehaul type deal. That thing was $50. And it wasn't really a clone per se, but it was an RTA, but you built it very, very high. What we're gonna be talking about is the Squape M. Now, this is brand new. It's not quite on the market yet. You may see this video the day of or the day before it is actually released. The both of these are exactly the same on the outside. The only differences between the two is the inserts that's inside the actual tank. It's Itself. You have a mouth to lung rendition, which is basically a bunch of little holes with a flat style deck. You also have a direct lung, which is the one I'm going to be showing you, but I will show you what the mouth to lung looks like. I'm kind of pumped up about this. This is a single coil. It is a little bit tall, but typically on high end devices, I don't know why it is. They're all tall. There's no such thing as a short high-end RTA. The only way you get it short is by using something from steam tuners or a drop kit, slam kit, nano kit. Usually none of those ever come with any of the tanks that you buy that are high-end. So just keep in mind, if you ever question whether or not the RTA you have is high-end, look at the size of it. If it's 18 inches long, it's probably high-end. It's also probably a cucumber because <laughs> if you have that big of an RTA, I would love to see how you vape on that. Send me some pics. Let's talk about it. Let's flip it. On the top, it's gonna say made by Statquam, and really nothing on the bottom. On the side, all of the companies that are actually reselling Statquam devices. I can't say I've ever seen a box that has all of the companies. Now, there isn't any that are located in the States just because this is EU import buy. And then on the other side, it's gonna say the name of the company and their website. In order to determine whether or not you have a direct lung or mouth lung rendition is gonna be right here. Direct lung is gonna look just like that, says direct lung. There's nothing else on the box anywhere except for on the UPC label itself. On the mouth to lung rendition, it's gonna say mouth to lung right there. One thing that's worth noting that's not really on here is how to get this piece right here out of the actual tank. Once you set it, you forget it, and then you let it be. There's no other reason why you would need to change that. Unless, of course, you're trying to convert from a direct lung to a mouth to lung, then you're gonna have to do what I'm about ready to show you to get it out. So that's the piece of paper that's included. Always a nice box. You get the top insert. We'll go over that shortly. On the bottom of the box, you're gonna get some reading material and an absolutely humongous, I apologize for that. That's a whole nother story in itself. Inside the box on the bottom, you're gonna get Tim Allen's toolbox or part of it. This is a lovely sized Allen key that looks like it is designed maybe for an eight millimeter or 10 millimeter screw to take off the fender of your car. This is also gonna be used to take the chimney out of this section, sort of like how the original scrape was. The only difference with the Allen key on this scrape versus the original is it was much, much smaller than what this is. We're gonna leave that out just so I could show you how to use that. And then you get this little guy right here, and I love these things. These are fan friggin' tastic. What this does, this goes around your tank and it gives you a very, very grippy situation so you're able to unscrew without jacking anything up. I love these. Then you get a spare set, which is gonna have some extra post screws and some extra O-rings. Really nothing too crazy going on here. Where the magic really happens, though, is this tank itself. I mean, this thing is unique as shit. And usually with most scrape devices, like this one right here, I did a review on this. This is the R version. 
Kind of the same type of deal with the way that you unlock it, but this is a 22 millimeter versus their new one, which is a 24. Airflow here is absolutely massive. Now, don't let that fool you because that's not the way that the airflow is going to go in. It's actually going to go through this little adapter right here, which I'll show you in a second. Drip tip on the top is 510. Now, when you want to open this up to fill it, unlike the old school ways where you would unscrew the top, this doesn't do that. When you first get this, this may be a little bit tight on opening. Just grab up here. Don't go counterclockwise. Go clockwise to open that up. And then that is going to open. And then you can open it up more. Just like that. And then when you want to close it, you could turn it more. So it allows you to really fill this up without having to dismantle any part of it. On the bottom of the RTA, very simple, 110. So this was on top of a mod, so it's very difficult for me to say whether or not this will be flawed. However, I will tell you this, this is a brand new one right here, the mouth to lung rendition. You could tell by looking at the bottom of that, there are no scratches on it. That number's a lot higher than that one. Three different things on the bottom of the tank. The first one is gonna be your airflow adjustment. Simple enough, you just turn it left and right to open. Now, if you go, all the way to the left that's going to put it at the locked or closed that does not allow you to take off the tank and that does not put juice into the chamber when you go to this line right here is what allows you to take this whole section off very very simple you see these little knobbies everywhere and that's because of the way that it is designed on the inside see down there your chimney you're going to put this humongous ass allen key in there and then just turn it to the right like you're tightening then you're going to start to see it come apart up here on the top. There's your glass and your O-ring. This simple just pops out just like that. Let's just say you have your insert in here and you can't get it out. Looking at the machining on the inside there, these little sections that are designed for the knobbies on the deck are... Guys, this is what we call precision machining. This is what the idea situation is for high end now what you'll see is these two little holes that's where your juice is going to come from so you're going to fill up this tank section here your chimney is going to be in there and juice is going to drip down there and then drip into the tank through those little ports sounds confusing and it most likely is once you have your insert in here the only way that i found to remove that is to stick something inside of those little ports and push it down because there's no other way to grab that actual insert this is the direct line Long insert. Do you see how large that port is? That's where your air is going to come in at. Now over here is your mouth to lung configuration. Very, very different. Instead of it being all large and open like this, basically you have different little presets that you can set the airflow adjustment to, and that's going to give you your airflow, and you can see the little channels. Also, what is different on the mouth to lung situation is the deck itself. It's not vastly different, and you can swap these out if you are able to pick up the inserts. What you're going to notice is this section right here on the direct lung it's a very very large port goes directly underneath the coil on this situation it's a straight shot again mouth to lung configuration direct lung basically a bow tie or ears from a teddy bear that's going to go where those little screws are and that sits just like that so this is a great example right now that insert is not in correctly the only way to get that out is to take a screwdriver or something sharp it's not going to jack this up and jab at it because that's the only way you're going to get that out. So just like this. You see what I'm doing? Work one side, then the other. And then there it is. There's the insert. And there's the line right there. So we just need the general area. Just like that. And now that is in. So you see that it's totally closed up because we're at that setting. So when you first put it in, it may be a little bit rough. That is locked. So no matter how much you pull that, that will not separate. Probably should have put the rest of the tank on. Very good. That's okay. We'll do it in a second. The drip tip that comes on there is a 510, and I did put my own drip tip on there. The only problem with using your own custom drip tip like you see me doing here for a more wider bore look is you would have to remove it every time you fill it just because... Well, depending on how big the 510 drip tip is, I just think that that looks much nicer than those skinny jammies. In those two ports right there is where your juice is going to come down and then go into this section 
where you see that little hole. The only problem with that is these holes are very, very tiny. So I'm not quite sure of how viscous you could be able to put inside of here to where you don't have to worry about that not wicking properly. Whenever you put an insert or any kind of diverter inside of a tank or an RDA, it's always gonna make it taller. You just have to compensate for that little bit of size that's in there, whether that's five millimeters, six millimeters. And you don't really wanna put a monstrosity of a coil on the inside there. Very traditional way of wrapping your legs around and then tightening it down. However, they've improvised. They've added these little cups that have these walls. So even if you don't wrap around, you're able to put your leg in between there and then pinch it. Keep in mind, guys, this is not designed for really big jalopy coil. Duro. Let's bring it on the top. Oh, right. What's up there, Bubble Crotch? Back on top with the Squape Enduro sitting on top of the Danny Box Mini. Now, I know it looks a little funny, but being that it is high end, I had to put it on something that was high end. 0.8 build at 32 watts. Let me show you some bed production. Whoa. If you put a build in this and you're finding that the flavor is muted, probably what's going on is you have entirely too much airflow. The side airflow, although being one-sided, has a lot of air, like an abundance of it. And I'm not quite sure if they designed it so you could put really big coils in it or if they were targeting more of the restrictive direct lung like how I am with the Typhoon GT3. I don't feel like that's the case because... When I open this up all the way, like right now where I'm at with that airflow, if I could, there we go. Airflow right there, that setting about halfway open is amazing. This is it all the way open, same amount of wattage. It's too much. It's too much airflow. So when you start to cut it down, I feel is going to be the most optimal. I was very nervous that this was not going to wick just because those ports are really, really small. And when you have very viscous liquid, which is typically what we use here in the States, is it isn't going to find its way through a little hole like that. It almost has to be force fed through it. Now, if you're rocking something that's like 95% VG, I can promise you that this is not going to be the most optimal way of vaping. Without a doubt. What I got going on right now is about an 82, 85%-ish, and it's wicking really, really well. Now, no matter how much power I put through this, it still functions. I don't have any issues with wicking or leaking. In order to get this to leak would be so difficult. The juice would have to go all the way through, go into the deck, and then go up and out because you have to keep in mind that the juice is nowhere near the airflow so this is almost a leak proof rta in a sense that even if you were to tilt it on its side it's still not going to leak in order to get this to leak there would have to be no cotton inside of the well the juice would go down those channels and then into that half well where the cotton would go and then continually overfill like too high and then go out i don't know i don't I don't know how you would achieve that. This goes into the bracket of a very, very leak resistant high end tank. And I don't know a lot of other high end tanks that are leak resistant. A majority of the high end tanks that are on the market are really designed for a restrictive lung or a mouth to lung. It's very rare to find a tank that has as much as airflow as this does wide open. But the glory of it is, let's just say you get this and you're like, you know what? I don't like the direct lung option you can buy just the mouth to lung inserts. Now, I don't think right off the jump, they're gonna be launched like that. You'd have to buy them separately later on down the road, but it is optional. So you don't have to buy a whole nother tank. You could just 
buy different inserts. Those little holes that are on the inside that I couldn't figure out what they are, are basically for removing it, in a sense, where you could take sort of a paper clip and kind of make an L shape, stick them in, and then pull them out. They don't have any other purpose aside from that. They're not designed for juice flow. Now keep in mind, I'm talking about the ones that are on the inside, not the ones that are on the top or the bottom. The inside holes that kind of go through the deck. So with high-end tanks, they all typically are very, very tall. K-Fun V5 Square, just a very large tank. Really good reference. It's probably about three millimeters taller. And then this is an Uber Toot. Uber Toot is very, very tall as well. Actually, a little bit taller. This is a rare tank. I don't want to say that this is Statcom's best product because that would be the mechanic mod that I did. That thing is phenomenal. But as far as tanks are concerned, I would have to say this and the very, very first scrape that they made. It kind of had a situation where I used an Allen key to remove the screw and then you had that big ass tank which was on the top. Almost like how this is. Obviously the deck is much more improved and it's much more difficult to leak, but this is well done, man. If I was to rate this tank on a zero to 10, I'm putting a 7.58 block. The machining is impeccable on this. No flaws, dings, dents, burr spurs, or cowboy boots anywhere on this. You know what should happen? Is there's companies that are making high-end devices that should take one of the notes out of his textbook because they're shipping them with VG. They're shipping them totally saturated, dirty, missing screws. I don't know if he's manually checking these one by one. We're talking about the owner, Chris. Or if it's just that well made, as it comes off the machine, it's checked. The only thing that I can come up with would be the Typhoon series by Smoker Store that really hasn't been dirty as well and very, very good machining. I would put this RTA in the top three high-end RTAs ever made. I wouldn't put it number one, that would be GT3. GT4 would probably be number two, but I'm gonna keep that in the same block as the first one, just because those are two very similar RTAs. Skyline was really, really, really good. It's just, I don't know if I would say that it beats this just because the skyline itself is a little bit smaller and well the skyline is sexy as shit though what makes this high-end tank really really nice is the fact that it's almost bright proof as well all you have is just this glass insert now when you buy this you don't get an extra piece of glass so if you do break it you're going to need to get an extra one which is basically borosilicate it's kind of glass but it's kind of not all in all, it's just like glass. It breaks like it. This having this frame around it really protects that glass, and the glass allows you the option of being able to see it. Now, later on down the road, they may issue or make some type of metal to make this really, truly a bulletproof tank. Like, take a look at this Uber Toot. That is 100% all metal across the board. So no matter what, the most you're going to do is ding this up. But you can't see the juice. At least with this you know how much juice you have. You have whatever's left on the top and then whatever is residual kind of in the well, so to speak. I like the design of it. The airflow is really good. It's just a really solid tank. I wish there was just a drop kit or a nano kit with this to bring it down that much more. However, if you do bring this tank a lot lower, you're gonna reduce the capacity from five mils down to like two or 2.5 which means you just have to open it up and fill it up more. So if you're willing to take that plunge and get into the high-end realm where you have a super large tank, guys, don't think that this is just Squape or Statquam. It's not. It's all high ends, which are very, very tall, which means a lot of capacity. So across the board, I would recommend this if you're able to find this to pick it up. It's definitely one of Squape's best RTAs that they've ever made aside from their original Squape. But good luck finding that. And I've kept it real. Have you? Jesus.